All right, this is episode 10, picking up right back where I left off. Um, and that was, I'll get rid of that, where we had this um, problematic method that uh, Refactor was in process. And in looking at this, I think, um, let's see, if the content string, so there's this element, there's this responsibility of parsing the content string, there's this responsibility of building the profile, and then there's this responsibility of sort of slamming it all into a list. So what's going to happen at some point is we're going to be parsing this uh, JSON, which is kind of what this passes for now. And then once that's parsed, it's going to be a bunch of like, you know, blobs of text. And we're going to pass the blobs of text one by one into um, some kind of algorithm for turning them into profiles, a factory, if you will. That might even become a separate class. And then that will kind of automatically fall out into here. So there's going to be I'm wondering if I can't get a little bit slick here. Um, so let me let me try something. I'm gonna say var. var eric profile equals content to string dot subs uh, location let me try this sharp first instance of substring in string that's what i was looking for index of so i think if the argument is null, the zero based value, or it will return negative one. Okay. So bear with me. There's a method to my madness. Index of Eric Dietrich. Now it's going to be something like for each. No, that's not quite what I was thinking of. I kind of want to like refactor here to simulate. Um, I wonder if there's a way uh, to find all instances of string in string. All indexes of. I was bored, so I wrote this extension method. Uh, that's so uh, if you're having trouble seeing. Interesting. But I kind of want all the substrings. Find all. I don't want the indexes of them, I want the actual strings. Here's a non-link. That's not what I want. Clearly I want link. Oh, string split. That's maybe. No, but I don't want to split. Ugh. See, the trouble here is if I, if I do this with the ends, uh, finding all indices of us. No, I don't. Index. <laughs> I guess it. This is stupid. Okay. Um, Cause I guess I'm not really doing a great job of em emulating um, what's going to happen. Cause there's going to be, you know, some notional form of JSON parsing where it's like, 
uh, username and I'm going to find all instances of username and then get the token that comes after it, you know, for example. Um, so I'm kind of trying to simulate that here, but maybe I'm just getting like too clever at this point. Um, let me uh, go back on that. And what I can do is extract a method um, called build profile. Uh, I probably, oh no, can inline this, I mean I guess, uh, no nah, I don't like this, I'm making it shorter but like only superficially, um, let's see, if I extract a method is this going to have some, yeah, so how do I get away from this should return thing where, in essence, oh, maybe the solution here is just less obtuse than I thought. Okay, so everything's covered and everything's green. Maybe now, yeah, that's better. Okay. So this is kind of the same method, just without exceptions. You could call it like unsafe get profiles. Um, now let me call it that for now. No, that's stupid. I don't have like a necessarily great naming pattern for this situation. Now this is kind of back to the original method that we had. Um, one thing I don't like is there's this like duplication of two list. Um, I wonder if I can flatten out this conditional here. If the content string contains Eric Dietrich. then I have a profile, otherwise I don't. Like I'm thinking, I wonder if I can do this. Just to get the logic right for each. For each Eric substring in uh, Eric Dietrich. So this is going to be a content string dot of content to string. That's substring. Is that going to throw an exception at me? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave this for now. And um, instead of kind of tilting at windmills, I think probably what we ought to do is write another method and let that sort of be the guide or i'm sorry write another uh test scenario okay we don't need this or this so let's go back to writing tests and i think probably like order of business number one here should be to get away from the dependency on so it returns Eric Dietrich. We've set this up. Um, 
to return Eric Dietrich. I want to get the Eric Dietrich concept out of the production code. So let's see. That's going to be a little trickier than it sounds because there's also um, end to end test depending on this. So let's see. Return a profile with first name Eric. Well, let's cheat a little and say um, return a profile. Sorry for the popping noises out there. I'm out at the at a cottage on the lake, and I think people are duck hunting or something. Uh, anyway, maybe you're not hearing that, and you'll just think I'm crazy. With last name and GitHub Inquisitor returns result with string Eric Dietrich. Now, one thing, too, that I maybe want to be clear about is to start doing this. Start remembering what exactly Eric Dietrich is. Um, result with, I guess, username. Because I, I don't want it to be confused that the goal is to parse this into Eric and Dietrich, and that's the first and last name. So um, let me start moving towards a little bit more of a deliberate concept here in this domain. So what we're going to do is say constant string user uh, username equals Eric Dietrich. Inquisitor For goodness sake, it can never find that. Intellisense, you're driving me crazy. Arg dot me string dot returns username. Okay, so now I've just typed that again, which means I've got some duplication in this test to think about. Um, you know what? Since it's arg.any string, I don't want to create the impression of a dependency that doesn't exist. Okay, so. Now it's going to be fairly easy to make this test pass. No, it doesn't exist yet. IntelliSense, it's a, such a double-edged sword, I guess. I'd say like 90% of the time I love it, but then every now and then it drives me nuts. All right, so let me go in here. And I guess the, the point of this test was to drive out a second property on the profile. Um, so that gets it passing, but this isn't gaining us a whole ton. So I think before too much longer, what we're probably going to have to do is uh, get a look at that JSON as it, com JSON as it comes back from GitHub. So, let's see here. You know what we could do, though? Interesting. I'm thinking build profiles. Well, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself here. I don't need to refactor too much for cleanliness. These methods are all tolerable. That uh, I definitely kind of want to get rid of this magic string um, so let's see execute query location text let's get a visual around this um, so this is now the only place and crunch off Uh, 
Oops. So I'm going to debug here. And there's probably going to be a nice acceptance test that I can drive out from this. All right. So. Oh, that's interesting. It's not even giving me first and last name. Rut row. Uh, well, I can worry about that later. Did they give me anybody's? Make it interesting if I have to go like, so log in. Okay. Total count. No. Copy value. Okay, so let me bring up Sublime Text. Oops. And, whoa, that's kind of serious. Just for reference, I'm going to add this as like a text file just to have here. That way we can uh, come back here later and get this. So if I'm thinking about what I saw there, there's this there's this JSON that's coming back, and this is the profile searcher. There's probably some class we're gonna want to have that just like consumes that JSON. And, um, you know, this guy goes in it. And then here we worry about the particulars of exceptions and stuff. So that's what I'm envisioning, that there's a parsing action. There's this sort of, like, central switchboard handling class. And then um, there's the thing that actually goes out. So along those lines, let me profile searcher tests, GitHub inquisitor tests, um, what do we call this? Um, results parser tests. And get profiles for location should. I'm wondering if, so there's a couple options here and I'm going to sort of think through them. One thing I can do is start at the unit level and say, hey, I've got this JSON um, that I'm going to turn into a, uh, in, into a profile object. And the other thing I could do is start here at the acceptance level, writing a failing test and, um, you know, call it the JSON parsing feature. I think that what I want to do for next time is, because uh, running short on time here, but for next time I would like to um, start with that acceptance test that maybe I just pare it down to like a single one that involves me um, for parsing and, and then drive it uh, outside in from there. So look for that next time around. I'm going to call it here. Um, I didn't do a ton, but we... Uh, worked on profile searcher a bit more. Yes, yeah, sure. 
Okay, and um, wow, that's right about exactly at 20 minutes. So tune in for the next episode when we get moving on the acceptance tests.